So I've been in this game for a long time. Well, I don't know, 2009, I think it's a long time. 12 years now is a long time. Been in this game for a long time. And I've heard a lot of crazy things during this time from defendants, from competitors, from lawyers. And I'm gonna focus this video on the, the craziest, the oddest, the weirdest, the stupidest, the dumbest. Have I thrown out enough ad adjectives? Are you getting it? The craziest thing some lawyers tell their clients to be clear, not indicting all lawyers. Every now and again, when I film a video about a lawyer or something like that, I get a message, sometimes not so nice, insinuating that I'm talking about a lawyer in Iowa that I don't know. To the lawyer in Iowa, I'm sure you're great. I don't know you. My phone's blown up. I didn't block this off my calendar. I'm not gonna pick it up because I'm really vested in this video and talking about the crazy, hold on, hold on. My marketing team has told me the first minute due to watch time on YouTube, I need to remind people to subscribe. So in Lessons from Prison, I wrote, please, <laughs> I think it's so, please subscribe. I even spelled the word subscribe wrong. I had to add an S. Please subscribe if you like this video. Okay, back to the craziest thing. And I'm gonna go through and add, oh, to the lawyer in Iowa, I'm sure you're great, I'm not talking about you. In this specific instance, I'm talking about a lawyer in New York who gave some advice to a prospect, now a client that I think is the craziest thing a defendant could ever hear. And I'm gonna go through the actual text message that I had with the then prospect, now client, and helping him understand why the advice this lawyer gave him was odd, awful, crazy. Think of the adjectives. So here's the advice that was given to this client, and then I'm gonna go through a whole checklist on why it's the craziest advice a lawyer could ever give a defendant. Here we go. This defendant just indicted. Boom, just like that, show up at 6 a.m., guns blazing, the dogs, the FBI, they love to put on a big show. <laughs> they love it. Can you, you, have you considered the taxpayer resources, the government wastes in arresting someone at 6 a.m. in their underpants and taking them down to the detention center. They love it, they love it. So they arrest uh, this defendant, retains a lawyer in New York, reaches out to me, calls, says, hey, I've been watching your, your YouTube videos. I saw the whole thing with Dr. Phil, pretty cool. Want to talk to you about what I could do to prepare. I have no idea what's going to happen. I read your book, hold on, Lessons from Prison, where it said it took three and a half years for your case to go from start to finish. That's a really long time. I really don't want to wait three and a half years because I kind of already feel like I'm in prison. What can I do to prepare? And I said, well, let's talk about it. So we had a really wonderful conversation. He then said, I'd like to have a conversation with my lawyer. I said, you're happy to have a conversation with your lawyer. Some defendants do, some don't. Most exercise their own judgment, but because he's just got indicted, nervous, scared, wanted to run it by his lawyer. So I'm gonna go through this communications with the lawyer and then get to the heart of this message and the craziest thing. So this lawyer told uh, this defendant after my this client said, I wanna retain white collar advice. I want them to help me prepare. So after he said, I want white collar advice to help me prepare for the road ahead, the lawyer had some thoughts. And what I'm gonna review now is the text back and forth I had with my client. Uh, for transparency, I edited out a few F-bombs in here, specifically from my client. This is a family-friendly uh, show. Someday my young children are gonna probably watch uh, these uh, videos. Be much older, probably a little chubbier by then, but I don't want them to hear swearing in the videos. For that reason, some editorial discretion, remove the F-bomb, so here we go. My client texted me back and let's rock and roll. The lawyer said to him, great idea, but way too early. Let me get through discovery in coming months and reassess down the road. Just relax and get off the internet for a while. So essentially the lawyer said, it's too early. That, my friends, to all the white collar advice subscribers, if you have them subscribed, I have no idea why, because I'm bringing real value here. You're getting all I got. That's the crazy, awful, terrible, sickening advice. It's way too early to prepare. Get off the internet. <laughs> Stop preparing. Now, I believe, you know, not everything on the internet is, is true. Just because someone says something doesn't mean it's true. You should trust but verify. You should do due diligence, vetting. I totally get it. But to tell someone to get off the internet is just bad advice. How do you think this lawyer was found by this defendant searching the internet? Absurd. So the idea of it's too late is just awful. So here's what I then said to the defendant. What do you think your lawyer will discover after going through discovery? And he said, what do you mean? I said, do you understand what discovery is? I think so, he said. Basically, government shares what they have. 
Yes, I said, discovery is the exchange of legal information and known facts of a case. I then said, you gave your lawyer $100,000 offset against a rate of $800 an hour. He said $150,000 offset against $800 an hour, but three, la three lawyers uh, in total are on the case. They charge $450 an hour. One guy just out of law school too. Am I paying to train him? Laugh out loud. I said, as you know, he is going through discovery for many reasons, including to determine how strong their case is against you. After he does, after he does that, th after he does, can I read, am I able to articulate my degree from USC is utterly useless. And I think I copy and pasted this text message incorrectly. Forgive me as I edited out all the F-bombs from my client. What I meant to say was after he goes through that discovery information, he may have a recommendation for you. Go to trial or plead guilty. From his message to you that will take months, you'll probably also blow through your $150,000. That's a certainty. So my question to you follows, Mr. Prospect. What will your lawyer find after going through the government's discovery? He said, then I'm done. I did it, man. Took returns and put money into my account. Simple as it gets. I'm done right. For some background, our client was an accountant back east who found a way, it seems, through discovery to have his client's tax returns uh, move to his personal bank account. $200, $500, small amounts that he figured his clients wouldn't notice. Whole host of reasons why he did it. The good old fraud, fraud triangle we talk about through our compliance training at our sister company, Compliance Mitigation. So he rationalized his way into taking returns for a whole host of reasons where eventually we're going to have to dive into. So he said, I did it. I'm done, right? I said, I'm not a lawyer, so I cannot tell you if you are done or not. What I'm trying to do is help you better understand how decisions you make today will influence your life later. Whether our team helps you or not, you should begin to see that the idea of delaying your preparations is as bad idea is as bad an idea as paying lawyers to discover what you discovered through fraud over the last seven years, that you stole money from your clients. Facts are a stubborn thing. Embrace it. Own it. Only then can you improve your situation or you can live like the ostrich. As I did, of course, as articulated in Lessons from Prison, I was a big, fat, bloated slob for three and a half years while I fought my case, blamed everybody but myself, made a lot of bad decisions, didn't live with any uh, dignity, embarrassed a lot of people, including my wonderful uh, parents who gave me every opportunity and privilege in life, and I squandered it. And rather than accept responsibility, I prevaricated, lied, and made matters worse. So you can go down that path, or you can say, I want to do better. <laughs> I want a better outcome. I want to get to the other side because I think about this 24 hours a day and I'm already in jail. I would have said F in jail, but someday my kids are going to watch this and I don't want to hear, hear them, have them hear me swear in a YouTube video, but you get it. You think about it all day, 24 hours a day. You can't function some days. You can't get out of bed. You can't brush your teeth. You can't have sex. You can't masturbate. You can't function. You can't do anything. So what can you then do to try to get to the other side? Perhaps you can own it. You can embrace it and prepare and not delay, which is the craziest, dumbest, stupid advice a lawyer can ever give a defendant. And I'm going to get into specific reasons why in a moment. I continued, Whew. on our call, you told me you were running out of money. You can never afford trial, even if you were innocent. As you know, some of our clients are very rich and can spend millions going through discovery. For them, the cost is a rounding error. It's literally meaningless to them. Some draw it out because their business is generating millions in revenues. It may be a cost-benefit analysis for them. Other clients go through discovery and spend every penny they have left because they are convinced they are innocent. Many of them are innocent, even though they end up getting convicted at trial because the odds of prevailing at trial in this country are sickeningly low. It's why so many innocent white-collar defendants plead guilty, including many clients of ours. Is there any spit on my lip? Forgive me, I'm getting excited here. Then I continued. You opened our call last week telling me you saw my video with Dr. Phil. If you are guilty, run, don't walk. As I understand it, you are crawling, not walking. Do you see it differently? I asked him. And you know, with your iPhone, you see like the three dots. Someone's responding. So I saw like the three dots for like a while. I'm like, he's writing me a book here through text message. This is a, a, a long message. Then after about 15 minutes of dots, he politely texted me. No, it is why I called you. I must change course. Can you keep me out of prison? I then said, I do not know, but I know if we prepare properly, you will live the rest of your life knowing you did all you could to prepare. And those that work hard tend to get better sentencing outcomes. But regardless of what happens at sentencing, 
You must begin preparing now, whether we help you or not. Then I asked him, may I ask how business is? And he said, effing terrible. That release destroyed me. So now I'm going to transition into additional reasons why it is never too early to begin preparing for life as a convicted felon. And to compile this list, this top 10 list, I reached out to clients and other members on our team to get their insights on, um, on just this experience. So here we go. Let's go through some reasons why it is never too early to begin preparing. Here's the first reason. It clearly wasn't too early for the government to indict you to come at 6 a.m. with the guns and the dogs and the helicopters. It wasn't too early for the government to indict you, number two. It clearly wasn't too early to retain a lawyer and give a six-figure fee. So the lawyer says it's too early, to, way too early to begin preparing. I read the message from the lawyer. Great idea, way too early. Wasn't too early to get indicted. Wasn't too early to give a law firm $150,000 that lawyers are billing against it. $800 and $450 an hour. Now, I'm not impugning the character of the lawyers. I have no doubt they're doing the work. And I have no doubt they're going through discovery to determine what the best course of action is. But I also have no doubt that our client said, if he spoke with them openly and honestly, and if he didn't initially, he is now. I did it. I stole I can tell you why, but it's a lot of money. It's a lot of clients. I know I'm going to prison. I want to mitigate and get the best outcome. You're going to go through all of my money and discover that I stole. I'm telling you that I did that right now. No other co-defendants in the case. No one to cooperate against. I found an opportunity and I seized it to have my client's tax returns go to my bank account. Got it? Do you need to blow through my $150,000 to discover what I just told you? I stole. I did it. Can we move towards a plea agreement? Because I'm already in prison. I don't want to live like Paperni who for three and a half years lived like a fat, bloated slob while he lied and prevaricated and pretended this didn't happen. It's part of the reason this lawyer perhaps said it was way too early. Maybe he wanted to go through the discovery when the client told him I did it, I stole it. And I don't know the lawyer, just telling you my experience through 12 years, a thousand clients, a thousand sentencing hearings, and time in prison interviewing, working alongside men. Get it. Number three. It was not too early for the Department of Justice to issue to issue sickening, scathing press releases. It wasn't too early for their press department to begin writing and producing, and that's where it ended here. May I ask how business is? Terrible. That release destroyed me. It clearly wasn't too early for banks to start closing his accounts because Citibank in New York closed his account in about 12 seconds as soon as the indictment came down. It wasn't too early for the banks to fire him. Number five wasn't too early for his business to begin getting destroyed. Destroyed. Of course, through his bad choices, through his fallout. He's not blaming or excusing. And my point in this video is to help you understand why if you embrace this idea that it's too early to prepare, then we can't help you. No one can help you. Then you're preparing. You are, what's the word? Preferring to live like an ostrich with your head buried, thinking that it's way too early to overcome the myriad consequences that accompany a federal conviction. Number six, not too early to feel like you're already in prison. I know you think about it 24 hours a day. I sure did. Number seven, not too early to begin to feel like an outcast in your community. Unfortunately, it's a reality. It's true with the press releases, the way that people gossip and and word spreads. Uh, It's not too early for that. Number eight, Uh, It's not too early for the government to take all your cash and for them to initiate forfeiture proceedings, take everything you have. Not too early for that, but according to this lawyer, and it's just not this lawyer. I've heard it a hundred times over the last, more than a hundred times over the last 12 years. Great idea. Let's just wait. It's it's just too early. It's just too early to, to, to deal with this. Get off the internet. Don't prepare. Go do something fun. Distract yourself. That, that's not mitigation. That's not unique. That, that's garbage. It's awful advice that you shouldn't pay $800 an hour for. In my opinion, if you feel differently, there are other channels. There are other people that can guide you and scare you about life in prison, try to manipulate you and exploit you. That's great. I'm going to speak honestly and directly to you, whether you like it or not, because that's why you're here. Because if you don't, you're going to live like the fat, bloated slob like I was and describe in lessons from prison, roll into in and out Burger five nights a week with my dog Honey in my lap lap pounding through two double doubles and fries, playing online chess all night, then living like a damn zombie the next day. I would have sworn, but someday my kids are gonna watch this and I don't want F-bombs in these videos. You have a choice here. And I'm not filming this video so the end outcome is the only way out of it is white collar advice. Whether we help you or not, 
prepare. You think someone else has a better skill set? Call them, retain them, get a scope of work, hold them accountable, prepare. As I continue on this list, I'm very animated here today because I just hate how many defendants call over the years and say, I've been watching your videos for three years and two years and nine months and seven months. And my lawyer told me that it was too early to prepare and my PSR sucks and they're recommending the high end of the guideline range and my narrative sucks and I intended my sentencing and it didn't say anything. And I'll say, well, did you think it's too early? No, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, I knew, but I cowered to my lawyer. I was afraid to ask tough questions. Continuing on, it's not too early to lose your reputation. And I know that well. It was devastating to see those press releases. It was embarrassing to my family and friends. And it was hard. And I know that it's hard for you. And even now I get chills thinking about those releases, as corny or cheesy as that sounds, because it was devastating to my parents, sickening. Good God, it sent my mom to therapy and she blamed herself. Maybe it's the Jewish guilt thing that I'm embracing as I get a little bit older. I'm 46 now. Those press releases are sickening. Wasn't too early for the DOJ to issue those releases. Uh, and number 10, the last one I'll share in this video. It's not too early for people to take pleasure in your pain. I saw that extensively through the Varsity Blues case of people taking pleasure in the pain of others, people they don't know, but even worse, people who know you, who supposedly support you, taking pleasure in your pain. It's just it's the way it happens sometimes. I know people in my case, I know in my case, you know, when I'm 25, making 600 grand a year at Bear Stearns, people are, well, I'm too young. I was too young. Uh, by way of leveraging relationships, I got to that position, which is true. I didn't earn. I mean, I, I was too young, making too much money. I hadn't worked my way up to get there. And I know some people resented and loathed me for that. And I may be underestimating how hard I worked because it was very long days, but there's some truth to it. So I know when I caught my case to use some prison vernacular. Some people took pleasure in it. So it's clearly not too early for people to take pleasure in your pain. In sum, it's not too early to prepare because your life has been, to been totally thrown upside down. And that's how I'm going to close this video. Jokes aside, subscribe me and subscribe if you like. If you don't, that's cool. This only works if you implement it. If you fully understand the consequences that come with your life getting thrown totally upside down. And this list of 10 could be a thousand, thousand things to list why it's not too early to begin preparing. And with all of that said, that's how I'll close. Two final things. If you have yet to write your personal narrative, click the video to the left above my shoulder. You're going to see a very cool video I filmed with Dr. Phil, less than five minutes that covers four points you must convey in your sentencing narrative. So click that video. And for those of you who want to better learn how to hold your lawyer uh, accountable, click the video above my right shoulder and you'll get access to the video I call 12 questions to ask a lawyer. Thank you very much again for watching this video. I hope you found value in it and I wish all of you success and health as you traverse this very difficult experience. Thank you again for letting us come into your home. I, I our whole team, takes it very seriously. Thank you so much. Back soon. Goodbye.